Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to live story time. My name is Miss Mary, and I have some great books to share with you this week. Um, let me just do a couple of things really quick. And um, as always, I like to wait just a minute or so for some people to tune in. And um, I always start with my little spiel about comments. Please, please, please comment and say hello in the comment area. Um, just a couple of quick reminders about comments that um, there is a delay. So you type something and I don't see it right away. Um, it, it's not that I'm ignoring your comment. I promise I'm not. Um, I just haven't seen it yet. So hang on tight. And when I do see it, I will be sure to give you a shout out. Um, and another quick reminder that if you say hi or you have a question for me or a comment and I'm in the middle of a story, I wait until I'm done with the story before I comment back. So again, not ignoring you, just don't want to interrupt the flow of the story. So um, hello, Margie. Hi, Sammy. Good to see you. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Aubrey. Welcome. Um, Welcome, welcome. So um, this week I have some great stories to share. I say that every week, but I really like the stories every week. Um, so this week, some there, some of them are about making friends. Some of them are about um, just, one of them isn't about that theme. I just really liked it. So, um, but the other ones are just about being, being, being friends and making friends by being yourself. Um, so I'm actually, I'm gonna hang on and then also about like finding that perfect friend. So um, yeah, the first book that I read this week was the one that made me pick this kind of theme, pretty loose theme, but um, I'm gonna save that one for last. I really, I really enjoyed that one. A very different book. Um, I don't think I've ever read a picture book like it. So that's always exciting because I've been reading to you for a very long time now. And I've, even before this, I've been a librarian for a long time, read a lot of books. So to have one that was like, huh, never read one like that before, doesn't happen too often anymore. If you have a question for me or um, anything that you wanna say in the chat, Please do, and I am going to get started with my first book. This one is called You Are Enough, a book about inclusion, written by Margaret O'Hare. And this story um, was so sweet for me because this is about a little girl. Um, it was inspired by a little girl named Sophia Sanchez, and she has Down syndrome. And so, I just really, really loved this book. Here we go, and it's so colorful. Okay, I think what made me love it first was when I read this first page and I saw so many different types of children on the page because I think it's so important for children to see themselves in a book. So chances are when they open up to this first page, someone will see themselves. Here we go. No two people are exactly the same. We are all unique and that's great. Being different is what makes you special. You are just right exactly as you are. But being different can be lonely. You may feel like you don't belong, but we're all in this together. Everyone needs a friend. But some people don't understand. They think being different is scary. Try to be good and brave and strong. Let people see the real you. Sometimes things might seem bigger than you, but you are stronger than your fears. Has anyone ever gone rock climbing 
like on a, on a like a rock wall. Sneri has always wanted to try that, but I am a bit scared. That's why you have courage. Courage is when something is scary, but you do it anyway. So maybe Miss Mary needs to build up some courage to try a, a rock wall. Don't let anyone try to stop you from taking a chance or trying something new. Surround yourself with people who love you. They are your cheerleaders. Listen to them when they say, yes, you can. When you fall down, get back up. Stay fierce. You know you've got this. Always so impressed by surfers, but I feel like I'd be terrible at it. <laughs> I don't know. Don't stay on the sidelines. It's your story, so be the star. Be you wherever you are. If people stop and stare, just keep going. Remember, not everyone may understand you, but that doesn't mean you still can't be happy just the way you are. Never say no to being yourself. Feel your own beauty inside and out. When you let your light shine, you will brighten the world. Wouldn't it be boring if everyone was the same? Being different is beautiful. So just be you because you are enough. Being enough means that you are full of love. You have purpose. You aren't perfect because no one is. But you are okay being perfectly yourself. You are enough and your friend is enough. Your teacher and neighbor are enough too. Remember that we all belong. Look for the good in the world. Start by looking in the mirror and love what you see there. Because just like me, you are enough. Okay, and there's a little bit in the back about the girl who inspired the story, Miss Sophia Sanchez. So this, um, I just loved this story. Again, like I said, there are so many different kinds of children on the pages of this book. And so I really feel like any child will open up this book and see themselves in it, which I think is so, so special. Um, so that is You Are Enough. And I liked that page about not everybody understanding you, but I, the way I see it, the right people will understand you. So, and those are going to be your friends, your cheerleaders, like the book says. Okay, so this is the book that didn't really fit <laughs> the theme, but I liked it anyway. And um, hey, right, Miss Mary's Choice. Um, so this is the wild card for this week. Um, if you're just tuning in, hello, my name is Miss Mary, and this is live story time. I have some great stories about making friends um, by being yourself this week. And as always, please say hello in the chat if you want a shout out, or you have a question for me, or a comment, anything. So here we go. So this book, I think it's just, I really like this author. Um, this is called The Word Collector by Peter H. Reynolds. I've read a couple of his books in past story times, and I just really love his words and his illustrations. So here we go. Here we go. Collectors collect things. Some people collect stamps. Some people collect coins. Others collect rocks. Some collect art. Some collect bugs. Others collect baseball cards. Some people collect comic books. And Jerome, what did he collect? Do any of you collect anything? Sammy, Aubrey, anybody? Let me know if you collect something. So let's find out what Jerome collects. 
Jerome collected words. Hmm. He collected the words that he heard. Certain words caught his attention. My trip to Peru was perfectly pleasant, his friend said. He collected words he saw. He wrote down willow. Certain words jumped out at him. He collected words he read. Emerald. Certain words just popped off the page. Short and sweet words like spark, bloom, drift, dream. Two syllable treats like treasure, motif, whisper, candid, hover, glimmer and multi-syllable words that sounded like little songs. Guacamole, kaleidoscope, geometry, wonderful, symphony. These are all such great words. There were words he did not know the meaning of at first, but they were marvelous to say. Aromatic, vociferous, effervescent. There were words whose sounds were perfectly suited to their meaning. Meaning, molasses, smudge, bellow, torrential, Tyrannosaurus rex. Jerome filled his scrapbooks with more and more of his favorite words. Jerome's collection grew. He began organizing them. Dreamy, science, sad, action, poetic. One day while transporting them, I'm a bit nervous. That is a lot in his hands. That's a lot of words right there. <gasps> Jerome slipped and his words went flying. Oh my gosh, after he spent all that time organizing them. Oh my gosh. As he began to pick them up, he noticed his collections had become all jumbled. Oh, sure. Big words next to little words. Sad words next to, next to dreamy words. Jerome began stringing words together. Words he had not imagined being side by side. So we have whisper, symphony, electric, peace, savor, dreams, cascading, stars. He used his words to write poems. He used his words to make songs. They moved, they delighted. Some of his simplest words were his most powerful. I understand. I'm sorry. Thank you. You matter. Jerome eagerly collected more and more of his favorite words. The more words he knew, the more clearly he could share with the world what he was thinking, feeling, and dreaming. One breezy afternoon, Jerome climbed the highest hill, pulling a wagon packed with his word collection. He smiled as he emptied his collection of words into the world into the wind. He saw children in the valley below scurrying about collecting words from the breeze. Jerome had no words to describe how happy that made him. And at the end, it says, reach for your own words Tell the world who you are and how you will make it better by Peter Hamilton Reynolds. So again, that one was my wild card for this week. I just really loved that story when I came across it. So, okay. Oh, Sammy says, I collect Pokemon cards and unicorn books. How cool. Wow, that is, those are two really cool collections, Sammy. Um, 
let me know who your favorite Pokemon is. I don't know all of them, so if you tell me one of the ones that's like not too common, I probably won't know it. But I will love to hear who your favorite is. And unicorn books, that's really cool. Okay, this next story is called The Best Kind of Bear by Greg Gormley. And I have to admit, this book looks a tiny bit familiar to me, and I'm not sure why. I hope it's not one that I've read before in story time. It might just be that I read it in passing, um, but I liked it enough, I guess, to read it again if I did, in fact, read it. So my apologies if this is an unintentional repeat. angle right. Here we go. Bear was a bear. A very sweet little bear. But he didn't know what kind of bear he was. One day he met a girl named Nellie. Hello, she said. What kind of bear are you? That's what I'm trying to find out, said Bear. Maybe there's a bear out there who can help me. Will you come back and tell me? asked Nellie. Yes, said Bear, and off he went. First, Bear traveled west. Deep in the forest, he met a big brown bear. What kind of bear are you? asked Bear. I'm a grizzly bear, said the big brown bear. I love nice long naps. Hmm, me too, said Bear. I love napping. Maybe I'm a grizzly bear, said Bear. Grizzly Bear stretched and yawned. Wake me up in six months, he said. Ooh, that's too much sleep, said Bear. I can't possibly be a grizzly bear. Maybe not, said Grizzly Bear. Besides, grizzly bears don't have those funny little stitches on their tummy. Next, Bear traveled to the frozen north. There, he found an even bigger bear. It was completely white. What kind of bear are you? asked Bear. I'm a polar bear, said the big white bear. I like to play in the snow. Me too, said Bear. I love playing. The two bears went snow sliding. This is fun, said Bear. Maybe I'm a polar bear. But Bear was starting to feel chilly. Shall we go inside and get nice and warm, he asked. Um, I never go inside, said Polar Bear. Ugh, said Bear, I don't like to be cold. I can't possibly be a Polar Bear. Maybe not, said Polar Bear. Besides, Polar Bears don't have washing labels attached to their bottoms. This time, Bear went south. There he met a bear with long claws. What kind of bear are you? asked Bear. I'm a spectacled bear, said the bear with long claws. I love to climb. Me too, said Bear. I love climbing into bed. Maybe I'm a spectacled bear. Come on up then, said spectacled bear, uh, bear from a very tall tree. Okay, said Bear, following carefully. The view is so pretty, said Bear, but then he looked down. Oh, I feel a little dizzy, said Bear. Then, blah, he fell off the branch, biff, bonk, bump. Ow, said Bear. I do not like climbing. I cannot possibly be a spectacled bear. Maybe not, said spectacled bear. Besides, spectacled bears are not as soft and bouncy as you. Finally, Bear traveled east to another forest where he met a black bear. What kind of bear are you? asked Bear. I'm a sun bear, said the black bear. I love honey, honey, honey. Me too, said Bear. I love eating honey. I must be a sun bear. But where do you get honey? From a beehive, said the sun bear. Get ready to...
Run! The two bears ran over logs and under bushes until... Splash! They jumped into a river. Dear me, spluttered Bear. I don't like bees and I don't like getting wet, so I'm definitely not a sun bear. Maybe not, said Sun Bear. Besides, sun bears never wear bow ties. Bear was fed up. He decided it was time to go home. Nellie was there waiting for him. What did you find out? she asked. Well, said Bear, I love naps, but not ones that are too long. And I love playing, but only when it's warm. I love climbing into bed, but I do not like climbing trees. And although I love honey, I do not like getting wet. And I definitely do not like bees. But I still don't know what kind of bear I am. I suppose that I'm just an ordinary and uninteresting bear. You're a wonderful kind of bear who has funny stitches on his tummy and a washing label on his bottom, who is soft and bouncy and who wears a very nice bow tie, said Nellie. I am? asked Bear. Yes, said Nellie. You're my kind of bear, and you can be my bear if you'd like to. I think I would, said Bear. And so Nellie wrote on Bear's label, Nellie's Bear. That's what kind of bear I am, said Bear. I'm your bear, and that's the best kind of bear to be. And that is the best kind of bear. So it looked like he was just perfect to be Nellie's teddy bear. I'm sure they will be lifelong friends. Okay, everyone, I have one more story to share with you today. This is the one that kind of inspired this kind of loose theme. Um, very, very different. I just really, really enjoyed this book. It's one of our new books. I found it on the new shelf. And this is called Marsha is Magnetic by Beth Ferry. It's a very interesting friendship story. I hope you like it. Marcia was a scientist with a problem. A big problem. A big birthday party problem. Although she knew that birthdays were just the measure of the Earth's rotation around the sun, some people had other ideas. Her mom was in full party mode, decorating the walls, making the piñata, baking, and smiling and skipping all around the house. Don't forget to hand out the invitations, her mom sang. Thus, the big birthday party problem. She doesn't know who to invite to her birthday. There was only one solution. The scientific method. Make an observation, ask a question, formulate a hypothesis, test the hypothesis, analyze the data, and make a conclusion. Now let's see if this is a way to figure out who to invite to her party. Step one, observe. At school the next day, Marcia observed Krista. She noted her study habits, sports skills, hairstyles, and clothing choices. But no matter how she sorted the data, she could not figure it out. Why is she popular, Marcia mused. Kids are just naturally drawn to her, her mother answered. Kids were not drawn to Marcia. 
Oh, sometimes they drew her. She was pretty easy to sketch with copper curls and owl glasses. Most kids drew a pretty good likeness, but as for liking her, well, not so much. Marsha's scientific experiments repelled people. Growing mold, studying slime, keeping rats as pets. Okay, step two, question. How does Krista have so many friends? Marsha asked. Well, maybe she has a great sense of humor, her dad said. Or a magnetic personality. Of course, Marsha thought. That's it. Step three, hypothesis. So Marsha did what any good scientist would do. She ordered supplies, overnight delivery. When her package arrived, she went right to work. She hammered and pounded and coiled and plugged. She me measured and glued and stapled. Soon, her creation was finished. And it was perfect. When Marcia came down the next morning, her mother said, my, don't you look attractive? <gasps> I feel attractive, Marcia answered. She sat down and clank, the spoon flew toward her. She pried it off and tried again. Clank, um, I'll just have bread, she said, keeping clear of the refrigerator and the toaster. As she walked through the kitchen, objects flew toward her and stuck. Do you have anything to tell me? Her mother asked. No, mom, just planning on a great day. Step four, testing. Marcia walked confidently down the hall. Within seconds, Amy zoomed toward her. Hi. Marcia said. I think I'm stuck to you, Amy replied. Perfect, said Martha. Let's walk to class together. As they walked, Marcia noticed Amy's earrings. Do you like cupcakes? They're my favorite, said Amy. Mine too, said Marcia. Did you know that baking cupcakes requires a chemical reaction? Um, that's Cool, Amy said. Marcia handed her an invitation. Cupcakes at my house this weekend? Um, sure, said Amy. Marcia beamed. As they walked, more and more kids stuck to Marcia. By their watches and bracelets, through their backpacks and belts, Marcia tucked and tied invitations to everyone she could reach. A sculpture of students tumbled into the art room. <laughs> Step five, data. Mr. Allen sorted everyone out by physically pulling them off of Marcia. Marcia quickly sorted the data. Her dress was a success. At the end of class, Marcia tried to get up, but she was stuck tight. As he tugged her free, Mr. Allen said, Maybe you should visit the nurse. Marcia was late to gym, but no one seemed to notice. Problem, Marcia asked. Mrs. Feeney lost the key. Now we can't have the kickball tournament. Marcia knew just what to do. She ran to the nurse and retrieved her creation. This time she plugged it in. The magnet shivered and shook and hums, hummed. The door quivered and bucked and banged. Finally, the doors burst open as the cart came charging through, flinging balls into the air. Kids yelled and jumped and chased. Marcia quietly unplugged her super magnet and watched the hullabaloo. But soon she found herself surrounded by cheering kids. It was just the reaction she had hoped for. Marcia's birthday party was positively wonderful. She collected lots of data and presents. 
and even some new friends. And at the end of the day, Marcia concluded that the best way to make friends was to just be herself. And that is the story of Marcia is Magnetic. That is a very interesting way to go about inviting people to your birthday party. <laughs> um, but you know what? Marcia found some new friends at the end of the day. So I think that's, that's great. Okay. Oh, Sammy says, my favorite Pokemon is Charmander. Charmander? I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Some of them have tough names to say. Cool. I'll have to look that one up to see what, what it looks like. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed the stories. And um, please have a safe Memorial Day weekend coming up. If you can get outside and it's not rainy, um, please enjoy being outside. Have fun playing. Um, and I will be back next week with more stories to share. Bye, everyone.